However, if the universe began to exist, that's the kicker here because nothing can begin to exist without a cause. So the Kalam cosmological argument is as follows. Premise one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Premise two, the universe began to exist. Conclusion, the universe has a cause. And that's it. From there, once we've defended this premise, we will then show how what it means to be a cause of the universe, and that's where things get exciting. Now, you'll notice the logical structure is airtight. If the premises are true, the conclusion follows by necessity. It's an unavoidable conclusion. What that means is we need to defend that the premises are true. So, premise one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. That statement is properly basic, which means it's obvious, it's self-evident. And to know that it's self-evident, all you need to do is really consider the contrary. Consider that if everything that begins to exist has a cause is a false statement, then what that means is some things begin to exist without causes. And if things begin to exist without causes, we would be living in a very different world. Uh, for instance, it would be completely inexplicable why we wouldn't expect things like a giraffe suddenly appearing between me and the camera, or a Hawaiian pizza appearing in my hand, or a crowbar appearing in your hand, or a tire appearing in the bathtub. If things could just come into existence without a cause, it would happen. The fact that it doesn't gives us intuitive, properly basic understanding that things do not begin to exist without a cause. However, if the universe began to exist, that's the kicker here, because nothing can begin to exist without a cause. That's premise one, it's properly basic.